All right, let's get it, man. Hey, man, say, man, it's your boy. I am Wavy Ears, and we on SGFD TV. And today we get a chance to sit down with Lucky Ozzy. What's going on, bro? What's up, bro? Man, how you doing? I'm selling, bro. It's good good stuff, man. Music thing, man. And you want to introduce? Go ahead, introduce who in the room. Spring but say 200. Most of all, hey, Joe, who on Joe? Prince, White, Marty Boy. So you got the gang in there. Couple guys in the cut. Who that bang in the back? Let me just say less. Everything spring for Satan, man. Everything spring for Satan, man. We gonna say less. Good stuff, man. We up next. Good stuff, man. And I'm happy you said that, man. I've been checking out your catalog. I see you doing some numbers. You got some momentum going. And I want to see actually how all that started. So before you was Lucky Ozzy, man, who were you? Like, take me from where where it started. Where'd you grow up? Samoa. I really, <laughs> I really, <laughs> I was born in Princeton, but I, I, I start, my, my journey started in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, okay. I was in Brooklyn for a minute. My mom ended up getting a job back in Princeton, so we moved back to Princeton. I probably, I went to school, all through school from Princeton. I was playing football and all that. Probably like 04, we ended up coming to the town. I swallowed by the town, bro. I swallowed by the town, okay. Blood. You know how the town is. Right. Started selling the dope. <laughs> we gonna, back. We're going to get into all that. We're going to get into all that, man. So you said you started your journey in Brooklyn and in then Brooklyn, you moved North. Then yeah. you moved to Princeton. Yeah, so, my mom got a job at uh, Princeton Hospital. All right, so how was that transition being, you know, a Brooklyn kid? Now, from what I know, Princeton is like suburban, you know? Very so suburban, like, very Yeah, suburban. So, so what's going on over there? How was it for you growing up? I was a good kid. I was in school, playing sports. Play ball. I was, I was, I was. Uh, my love was football, man. Football. I always, I always wrote music and all that because I used to watch my cousins in New York. They had a little rap group and all that. They used to be making music and all that. So <clears throat> my first, first time writing around was eight years old. I think I recorded a song and all that with my cousins. Okay, all right. And then you mentioned you, you, uh, you played sports. Uh, what sport you played? I played ball and football. And ball and football. Which one was you better at? You got I feel one. like I was better in football, but I probably should have st stuck with uh, basketball. Basketball, okay, okay. So, like, what what uh, passion was a little bit more heavier around the, let's say, early teens, like music or football? Football. Football, okay, yeah, okay. Football, yeah. Now, now take me like through your day when you was playing football, because from a little research, you went to go play football in college, right? Yeah, I played at uh, Alabama State for a little bit, walked okay. on and all that. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, so, fight. so Brooklyn to Princeton to Alabama. That shit, wild. So, so how how was Alabama? How was that experience? Alabama was different. It was different, but Alabama is like a college state, so it was more like it was more like school. Because when I left here, I was I was already out here, so my mind was still like streets a little bit. When I got to Alabama, it was like everybody that you meet probably was like school kids and all that had the father homes and, and everybody was in the school, bro. Okay, okay. So so then I missed a little part. So so you didn't really go from Princeton to Alabama. You No, nah, I was here first. I was yeah, here. all right. So were you still going to Princeton schools when y'all moved? Yeah, I was still out going here? to Princeton schools, yeah. I was staying with uh I used to live with this white family, the Vetans. I was staying with them, I stayed with them for me. She ended up kicking me out because she oh, didn't shit. want me coming to the town. Okay. And on the weekends, I would go home with my mom. And she she wasn't feeling that. So after a while, I mean, she tried to stop it, but she couldn't stop it. And after a while, she ended up kicking me out. I go home, my bags are packed at the door. She okay. Me out, yeah. Okay. So, so what made you want to keep coming back to the town if it seemed like the situation was, quote unquote, for the betterment of, of your your, your, your your success almost. I was young and ain't know no better. And then I was already, I had turned blood, started selling dope, was making a little bit of money, so. And this was I all know. before you went to go play School, football? Yeah, that kind of threw me off track. <laughs> oh, I lost man. my sight of vision, you know? Okay, all right. So, so like, you got, we, got, we got to break this down. You a football athlete? Football and, athlete, and, and, I had and you turned blood? Syracuse, Duke, UConn, Nebraska. I had a couple, I had a couple schools on. But I was gone already. Right. I started getting, I started making money. I lost sight. Was there any challenges between like juggling football and school life, and then tackling and you know tackling and managing the streets? What was like the challenges that you faced? I stopped caring, bro. I stopped caring about school. My grades dropped. I, I think I finished school with like a, a D average, a, a one point nine or whatever. So a lot of schools mm -hmm. I, I ain't get accepted to, and the only school to accept me was Alabama State. So. It was over. Once I came out here, it was over. Okay, all right. So how long was you at, uh, at Alabama State for? I stayed the whole time. I ended up 
transfer to Arizona for a minute. <coughs> uh, they tried at, at um, Alabama. They tried to turn me to a tight end. I don't want to fill in that position. Pause, pause, pause. pause. <laughs> pause. <laughs> don't figure, don't figure, don't figure. Yeah, oh, yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I ain't want to play tight end. Then they tried to make me a safety. And I don't like, yeah, that's, that's crazy. I ain't like hitting, I don't like tackling. <laughs> oh, 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 that? oh, that's crazy too, but yeah. Oh, oh, pause, pause. I, I wanted to score a touchdown. That's what I was, that's okay. what I was good at. All right. So, so when did you come back to the town full time? Around what year? 13, 2013. 2013, 2013. So you're back now. You had a journey. You already said you was kind of lost based on your activities in the streets, but you was one of the ones that was able to get out, play some yeah, football. Yeah. You know, it may have not gone the way you wanted. Now you're back. It's 2013. What's Lucky Ozzy doing? My mom is living in the section there. And everybody around me is selling coke. I'm going to grab some coke. So you just jump back in. Jump right back in. I'm going to think about no jobs, nothing. All right, so where did music come into play during this time? I've, seen, I've been I always grabbing my pen to write shit. Yeah. But I never took it serious. It probably went until I did the song Balenciaga and I seen the response we got off that. Okay. And that's what made me start taking okay. a little more serious. Yeah. All right, so, so we're definitely going to get to that because I definitely want to talk about <laughs> Balenciaga. I was looking at the view counts and that's probably one of the most hottest yeah. songs, you know, <laughs> that shit jam. But before all that, right, like just doing some research, it seemed like you got caught up in a situation that kind of resulted you in having to do some time. Is that something we could talk about? Yeah, we talking about this. All right, so, so it's 2013. So from what I read, you maybe got jammed up like late 2016, early 2017? Yeah, 16, I think December 8th. Yeah. December 8th, yeah, 2016. Okay, all right. So like before that time, like what was what was happening? Like, you know, camera friendly, you know, what what was happening? Like what was what was in move? Like did you feel like something was about to come crashing down or was shit regular? Nah, um... I just, I ain't want to sell coke no more. I found the plug that had some dope. The dope money was coming fast, so I started selling dope. I was back selling dope. All right, so take me through that day, you know, that that uh, that terrible day when, you know, you got knocked. Like, wh like how was that morning? Uh, shit, how was your mental? I was in, I was kind of fucked up. I ain't really, a lot of my money was going. I was gambling. I was in a bad situation. I just had a daughter. And that morning, I, I was drinking lean. Drinking lean, I was popping perks. My man was at the crib, he was watching uh, rap battles. And as we were at, watching battles, I see a light flash through the, through the window. And I, I tapped him, like, yo, bro, you ain't see that? He's like, nah, you tripping. So probably like 10, 15 minutes later, I see the light again. So I go to the window, I, I crack the, the uh, blinds. And I see them all set, I see them setting up, I see the trucks and all, I see them on top of the hospital roofs. And I see them, um, I see them on the porch now. So I built my red my man, like, yo, bro, I want to trip and they smack police on the porch. So I run to the back, and they end up down in, I see them all in the backyard. I run up to the uh, attic, my big mom was up there. So I tell her it was mad police. I could have swore I gave him my money, but she said I didn't. <laughs> she got she you. Money. She got she got you. Yeah. She's like, ooh. <laughs> and they came in. They came in. I come back downstairs. They got my boy in cuffs. And I'm like, yo, damn, bro, you got police kicking to the crib and all that. He like, nah, they ain't here for me. And they cuff. Me. They like, yo, you BG. I'm like, yeah. They cuff. Damn. Took me down to the station and all that. And then the um so basically got booked, they looking for you. Now that first night, first two nights, like what's going through your mind? Are you thinking like it's a fluke, something that's like gonna brush up your shoulder, or do you feel like, damn, I'm in, I ain't I'm in some trouble? To you. Once, they, once they said it was dope, it was kind of a sign of relief. This was a lot going on at the time, but nah, it was a lot going through my mind. I just had my baby. My baby was only two months. So yeah, damn, so a lot of them, you know when the feds pick you up, I'm thinking that I'm gonna be going for a minute. Well, luckily, uh, Fizz is off the point system, back round once we played my first bid, so I didn't really get too much time. So, how was you feeling going straight to the Fizz? Um, I'm saying, I was, I'm saying, of course, I had mixed feelings. I was nervous a little bit, but it's my first bid, first. Right. I was there. I was nervous. It was a lot of shit going through my mind. 
course, of course. So take me to that like uh, sentencing day. You just said you had a daughter, so you got that on your mind, right? Are you are you writing that all while you sitting before your sentencing or like? like nah, music, man. I started writing for real and, and doing the music probably to like last year. Okay, okay. It was just every from time to time I, I get bored and write, but music wasn't on my mind. Music was never on my mind. Yeah, there was so much other shit going on, so yeah. Yeah. I knew I was good. I always knew I was good at it. It was times I'd go to the studio and record and all that, but it was nothing that I wanted to do for real. But you got until, a good response. Yeah, until I got the, the Balenciaga shit. Understandable, understandable. So, so like, you get sentenced. Um, it seems like it's like I saw I read like forty two months. Yeah, I got forty two months. Forty two months. I out to sixty months, and then they went. Under the guidelines, came forty-two. Forty-two. Okay. All right. So like that's what like like three years, three something, years, something like that. Yeah, three years. But I took a uh, a program it's called R DAP, and uh, it's it takes a drug a, yeah, it's a drug program, and it yeah. it takes eighteen months off your sentence. Okay. It's probably one of the wildest programs I've ever yeah, been. Yeah, that shit wild as hell, right? That I mean, shit was wild. Yeah. Mean, <laughs> meaning what? Like I don't really know what the program is about. Like what can you tell us that's about the program? <clears throat> It's supposed to be a drug program, but it's more like behavioral based. So it's this like, too much going yeah, on. it's like, it's crack can't even explain it, bro. So you just do some wild shit. It's hard time. It's hard time to fit. You would have to go do it. Like, Understandable. That's, like, that's and, crazy. And I'll be honest, I, I ain't never do no jail time. You feel me? So all I know is from interviews and what I hear and shit like that. It's so, whack. so, it's a, it's whack. so in general, like, Motherfucker like me, I kind of want to know, like, what do people do to keep busy in jail? Work fight. out, play ball. <laughs> yeah, who yeah, said, who said fight? Ball. I'm saying, he might, yeah, he might fight. That's how my bed, I'm saying, but <laughs> in jail, everybody going to bed different. Everybody, yeah, everybody do their beds different. Like, he might want, he might, he might not be a person that might work out. Yeah. He might be a person that's, that's working on himself. Like, yeah, he like to play cards. Or, yeah. He. He he, he 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 making plans for when he get out and this that there so he reading reading up and all that. You got some niggas that's gonna go over there all work. Yeah, you got niggas that wanna that's trying to get pills or yeah, trying to get, get home. They in the law library all the time. Right, right. And you got a nigga like me just running around. I was gonna ask, what, what'd you around. do? Yeah, what yeah, I did. Yeah, what'd you do? Yeah, what'd you do? Six in the morning. What time did you be up? Me, like six. <laughs> like six. We hit the gym. We work out. Wow. We probably work out to record. Record like ten. Then we go change up and all that. We go to child. Child was 11. Yeah, child like 11. At the child. If fans you really, it's like really like a college campus. Yeah, it's like, it's it's like, like school. It go down in there though. Yeah, it's like okay. school for real. Child yeah. at the 11, I mean, at the child, yeah. then I would have to go to programming. I'll be in my little art dad program from like 12 to 4. 12 to 4. <laughs> at the 4, you know what I'm saying? At the 4, I used to be in, uh, in the Murrow Leagues. I, I played all the sports. I played basketball, softball, and all that. Hey, you wanted to have a team, and you wanted to play each other. So after that, I think Rico, I mean, then I go to child. No, I go to child first. Child was like for dinner. So I was like six. And then from six to like eight. Eight yeah. Rico, right? Rico. Yeah, Rico. Rico at yeah, eight. The next morning, you do the same shit. Yeah, the next same shit the next day. Regular shit. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So, in general, right? So, you're saying people work out, people, you know, try to find themselves. And you, you kind of was just going with the flow, doing doing what you had oh, to do. First to time. Keep it, saying. It took me a minute. I'm right. saying, when I first got there, okay. I ain't understand when people was like, yo, you got to find your bed. You got to figure out how you going yeah. to bed. When I first got there, I was still kind of fucked up because the night before, we was wild. The night before I went into prison, we was wild. We had fun that night. That should be fun. Yeah, that was all drugged up and all that. Yeah. that to, should be crazy. I was drugged up and all that, so when I came, I was kind of fucked up. So I slept like two, three days straight. And then my man from Baltimore, like, yo, he like, where you from? I'm like, I'm oh, Jersey. He's like, yo, oh, Jersey, you, can, you ain't gonna sleep this shit away. And like, matter of fact, I'm gonna take you to all the Jersey owners. To me to introduce Jersey owners and all that. Then. Yeah, because in the feds, it go, it go yeah. by cars. Like in the feds, it go by states. It go by Jersey. That was when I first yeah. came in. It took Maryland. Out. It go by states, feel me? Okay, so so you basically uh, like locked up with people from your state. Is that what you're saying? Nah, you locked up. No, all in the feds, it's all over the world. 
but go by your states when you get there. All over the country. Like you got to pick a car you want to get. You like you from Jersey, you get a Jersey car. You from Maryland, get a Maryland car. Go by states, feel me? Because yeah. it's on a massive scale, like it's all around the world. So go by states. Okay. Then all they right. got, then then they got I, game time. All the bloods yeah. and the curse together and shit. That's how it is in the feds. Yeah. Once I got out of intake, they took me to the east side of the prison. Okay. And um, that's when when I got off the bus. That's when. You see, yeah, you see, yeah, going yeah, on. Going see everything on. Like, going on, Jersey, right? Yo, Jersey over here, New York over right. here, okay. Bloods over here, Crips over here. So, right. Right. so, so I know, I know, being in, being in prison, being locked up, I know she could get hectic, she could get wild. Like right, yeah. from what I hear, I know she could get wild. So I want to ask you, like, have you seen or experienced any some wild, like some wild shit that you could say on camera? Like, what's the most yeah, wildest wild experience shit. that you had in jail? I seen some wild shit. I seen. Um, <laughs> Remember the Italians got this in one dude, like five in the morning, woke me up, dude, screaming and yelling. Yelling for his life and all that. I seen uh, the blood niggas get somebody, somebody from Harlem. He poked them up pretty bad. Shit be going down. Yeah, so we was going to town, was like, and I was at uh, Fort Dix. Fort Dix, I think that's, that's the biggest joint, jo right? Fort Dix, yeah. Fort Dix, the biggest prison like in, uh, in the federal, yeah. It was like 5,000 people. It ain't too much fighting in the federal. Nah, they go, they go straight to knives. Down. I seen, I seen, yeah, so we was on our way to child. And on our way to child, all the blood homies was in front of our building. They was waiting for, uh, they was waiting to come in. Once the, our door popped, they came in our unit and they got the, the hold of the Harlem nigga. Kicked his ass pretty bad, poked him up pretty bad. Yeah, we going down. I was say, that, that's some wild stories right there. Yeah, it ain't too much fighting in the feds. Okay. okay. They go straight to I'm night. saying, then, 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 I seen, I'm saying, they ain't really go down, but. Somebody paperwork ain't come through right. Yeah. They got my body. I got a friend to go by your paperwork. Like, they got your whole background. Like, as soon as you get your paperwork, they got everything that you ever been through your whole life. Like, and if your paperwork not good, they send you, you can't be on the compound. They send you to the hole. You got stealing, too. Stealing is big, too. Yeah. I seen a dude from Chester got caught stealing. Yeah. And they set him up, kicked him up. Right. Tell me, can't live there no more. They had to go to a different prison. So he was, it should be real. I was just about to say, yeah, yeah, it should, it should be, be real. real. It's a whole nother level, like, you feel me? Like, mm. that shit, the government, you follow up, you go to the and shit. The level. Pretty much, though, everybody be chilling, though, for real. <laughs> it's just rules. You break rules, you can yeah. be dealt with. But yeah. Yeah. Most of all, they be on man time. Everybody on man time. Yeah, big on respect. Shit, big big on respect. Big on respect. Hey, you dealing with, you know what I'm saying? You dealing with some wild motherfuckers. Yeah, there's some wild niggas in there. But they they don't last for real. They get sent yeah, up. Yeah, they ones that they don't send them to the yeah, they they hole. Oh, and they do their bitch in the hole or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause yeah. if you, cause you can make it to the cars crash, like, like the yeah. cars, yeah. like the, the states, they don't want to cause no confusion. Yeah. So they get together, like something go wrong between somebody and each car, they get together, like, nah, that's what happened to the road yeah, wrong. They got to send them up, he got to go. You was in the wrong, you got to go. You in the wrong, you got to go in the fence, for real. I mean, so, so some of the shit you just explained, that's some wild stuff right there, you know what yeah. I mean? But I want to ask you a question based on some interviews I've been hearing, right? About some just, some stuff that could happen in jail, right? So, I, you know Vlad TV? Yeah, I know Vlad. Vlad TV, right? So, he asked some Chicago rappers named Rico Reckless and Ewall Sam up. Like, you, you know who them rappers are at all from yeah, Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were saying, like, I think it was in uh, Fulton County Jail that, like, they got some shit called Glock Dookies, like, where they basically fill up the tube with all types of weird stuff and shoot it at people, and it'll take your eyebrow off and stuff like that. Like, basically, that's their weapon. Like, people getting shot with Glock Dookies. Like, you ever heard of anything? Like any variation like, of that shit? I never heard that like that. I might be cat, but I'm saying I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna shit. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, somebody like that. It, it might be, I might be going there. They on some, they on some freaky shit. That might be a dookie. That might go on in Fulton County. I ain't doing that. I don't know, I got to see that. 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 I got to see We got two, this twin right here, this Reese on the phone, we got two. Hey, Bones, yo, yo, I'm doing, we, we, we doing a podcast right now, you heard her talk your shit, you on, you on, you on the mic. Yeah, we talking, we, we, we with Jay Stacks, man. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah. 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 Everybody waiting with the game. Hey, BG and them niggas out here doing an interview, man. Oh, you say you still on the mic, gang? Wanna say something on the mic, too? We got, we got bones on the phone, too. Oh, we about to get Reese. Reese, go ahead and talk your shit, Reese. Go ahead and talk your shit, Twan. Yo, what's the time, man? Y'all know what it is, man. Big bro, man. Yo, this is a lot of niggas, man. Hey, bro, call me back while you fifteen minutes, though, you heard? Free my boy. Tell her your... Hey, free bones, you know shit. Hold on, I'm gonna let you say one more thing before you back. You already. Hold on, I'm gonna eat what I like. Hey, Bones, what's up, bro? So you know the shit. Niggas trying to take off, feel me? You know what's going on. I said niggas trying to take off. You feel me? Niggas doing a little interview right now with my bro, some J Stacks in the cut. Stacks in the cut. Hey, yo, hey, yo, talk this shit before we get out of here. Man, tell them free the guys, man. Fuck slime, man. Yeah, I'll be out there real soon, man. Big 200 shit. You already taking off, man. We up shit. next, man. 200 shit, 200 shit, 200 shit. Hey, I love you, Bruce. You heard about the oh, end of the So take me through your first your first day out. Like, you, you know, you just sat down for like three and a half years. Like, how was your first day out? What, first day out of? First day out of, uh, of the feds. I don't know. I can't really explain that, bro. That shit, it felt good. It felt good. Shit felt fake. Yeah, it just shit felt crazy. It felt good. We just got jumped in the truck, doing my little outfit. Went and got something to eat and went straight to the halfway house. Okay, okay. So, so, so you went straight to the halfway house. So, how was it when you were done with all that shit? Like, when was it when you was done with all that shit? You had, you know, how, halfway house. You good? I think October first, third, something like that. Somewhere in October after I got out. I got out April. I went to the halfway house April third, two thousand nineteen. I think. Um, I mean, I was, I was, I was already getting like furloughs and getting home passes and all that. And before I was all the way out, I was on. Like, it was in no house arrest, but I was home. But then what they call that shit? What they call that shit? What? Home, home confinement. Yeah, I was home confinement. Yeah. Okay. Home. I would have. I'm, I couldn't. Uh, I wasn't supposed to be outside, but I was home. Okay. It was in the house. Yeah. Cause work. I could only go outside to go to work and shit. And if I did go outside, I had to, had to get permission. All right, so now you out, you know, you're in a halfway house. You know, uh, did you pay attention to the trap music scene at all? Like, was there any differences that you noticed from when you went in from when you got out? More people rapping. Yeah, I'm saying yeah, everybody was rapping. Yeah. And then it'd just be like it, new faces, a lot of new faces. Kids that were young were older now. They had shit, shit. They had same shit, same, same shit, shit yeah. still, bro. Yeah, same yeah. shit, same shit. Same shit, they ain't nothing the Everybody in the same spots. Everybody in the same spots. They not really the same. Same shit going on. Okay, all right, so with the trend music scene, like from an outside perspective, it seems like within the last maybe three, four, you can even stretch it five years, it's been on a steady incline. So you, Lucky Ozzy, how do you fit in the mix of trend music scene? Oh, I feel like I'm different. No, no disrespect, no Trent, ah. no, no Trent rappers. I think they, I like all of them. I think they all, I like Trey Twigs. Um, I like the uh, big boy, that's my boy right there. I like uh, Just Doe. Um, EBK Ron. EBK Ron, yeah, EBK Ron. Shout out to EBK Ron, he five too. I like everybody for real, but I just, a lot of them be on drill time. Like, I don't really do drill music. What kind of music do you do? I feel like I'm an artist, but I try to tell a story or paint a picture or something. So I try to, when you hear my words, I want you to see what I'm talking about. Okay, all right. So you mentioned it a little bit earlier today, right? But talk me through you making that Balenciaga song, because that seems like the song that gave you either the, the motion, like, yo, I should keep this going, or if the people around you was like, this fire, let's keep it moving. Balenciaga, how did Balenciaga came? I had recorded one song when I first came home, but what that shit was? Going through some things that I recorded that I I ain't really like that track so I was like I'm falling back. This music ain't for me. Then my boy Gully brought me a beat. The beat was called Balenciaga. So uh, I don't know. We went. We did it. We went to the studio. I wrote something to it. We came. We like yo, bro, can you get? Let me get a hook and a verse for this beat. And we went to the studio. We recorded it. At first he ain't like it. it was, I think it's my first song I, I did all the tune with too. First time I ever used all the tune. I thought it was, I'm saying, when I first heard it, I'm like, yo, this is a hit, bro. He, 
He ain't like it. He tried to. We, I think we recorded that song like three times. He had three different verses to it. But we went back and used the first verse. But then when we when we put, it, I'm saying when everybody else heard it, they like, yo, bro, that's yeah, fire. that's tough. Yeah, that's fire right there. It's wavy. Yeah. When we put it out, it was a hit. We was in clubs performing it and all that. Yeah. And then, then you followed up. Did you follow up with Ooh after that? Because that's another song that I was hearing around the town a little bit. Yeah, Ooh, Ooh came after that. I feel like Ooh, I think Ooh is the one. I think Ooh, we just ain't got the right marketing and promotion. I think if we get Ooh out there, I think if we land on the right edge, I think that, that'll that take us all where we need to be. Okay, all right. I'm way on the track, too. I'm way piling up. Good stuff, good stuff, man. So, you know. Uh, we, we hear yeah, it, right? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, was it Pain in My Eyes? Something pain you just dropped? Eyes, yeah, pain, pain in These Eyes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now that eyes. song was like, listen to the lyrics, it's heartfelt. It's like you was putting your, your story on the track. Like, yeah. talk through it. Like, is that one of your favorite songs? Like, did you want to put your, your, your emotions on the track? Like, take me through the making of that song. I don't even remember making that song, to be honest with you. Sometimes that's those are the best ones, shit, for real. Yeah, all my shit's like, oh, all my like, shit's like yeah. Like a year and a half old. Oh, I think I think that beat was called Pain. I think it was called In These Eyes too. Then I just I don't know. Oh, Pain in these eyes, yeah. And I was just part different shit I've been through with shit that other people go through too though. I'm like, yeah, let me anybody that got pain in their eyes, let me speak on it. Okay. Right. All right. So so what could we be expecting from Lucky Ozzy, man? This, this for the rest of the year, twenty twenty three? Like take us through your plan. Be honest, I ain't been in the studio in like five months. I ain't recorded, broke nothing in five months. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how I can get us heard and how I can get us out there. And then I know Instagram and TikTok is very big, so I'm trying to learn all that. So I ain't really too good with Instagram and, and TikTok. I don't know how to do. I'm said I dance and all that, but I don't know how to do mm -hmm. what's going on there. I'm still on two steps and moving our shoulders and shit like that, but. I'm trying to figure out like the business side out of it. More disturbing yeah, going viral about this shit. Yeah, yeah, managers and managing and all that. I'm trying to figure out how I can get some managers, the PR, the marketing, the promotions and shit like that. I feel like that's very important. Cause the music, I can make music. Music, that's easy for me, making yeah. music, but it's the other shit. All right, all right, awesome, man. Well, I want to say thank you for the time that we had today. Any last words you got to say to the camera? And we up next. You know the shit, we up now. Yeah, we coming. They know what's going on. Oh, Act crazy. Pause, yeah, pause. Crazy. 200. 200. Why you get that? Why you get that? You know shit. And if, and and if they let them through the doors, you know what shit. We lock them shit behind You know the shit. <laughs> Only we come here. Yeah. No dookie pistols. No dookie pistols. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm saying it's free to God, it's the peace to God. So we'll be back for the Shout out to the way. Hey. We, we still <laughs> recording. Put in a cap, no dookie pistol. Nah, we still, we still, we still, still recording. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say, uh, the free bones. Everybody else, free ish. Free bones, you know free ish. Free free nines, free jones, free sex. Tex. Um, that's the fair food on his D on the way. Uncle E, you know we got it. All God. Uncle E underscore God. Rest in peace, Marty. Rest in peace. Uncle E underscore E. Tito. Underscore Tito. Follow me on the board. Yeah, rest in peace, everybody. KH. Same shit, different day. We up next. Yeah, man. 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 Y